Hey, I got that new wheel. Hey, who's in the do trip? And we're live. Welcome to Bet Records, where we talk about hot topics, ideas, and all the shit you really want to hear. We got a special episode here uh, for you today. Uh, we actually have a special guest in store. I've been, we've been trying to get a, a few special guests just so we can kind of have more more viewpoints on the ideas we're talking about and um, really just kind of round out our ideas because I mean the two of us can only talk for so long about certain things. Yeah. So every episode we're gonna at least try to get a special guest in, but it might not happen every time. Um, we actually have Dylan Check here. How you doing, Dylan? Good boys, been a fat minute. It's been a minute, bro. Been a minute. Um, Dylan, you're in the military, correct? Minnesota National Guard. Whoa, oh, yeah. thank you for serving. That's awesome. It's awesome. Oh, what do you yeah. do for them? How was that? What do you do for them? I basically am a janitor, even though my a job janitor, is shoot huh? guns. That's all the military is. They, they sell you some cool stuff, but really you're just a janitor. A janitor that shoots guns. I had, I wouldn't mind being that janitor, huh? Hell yeah. <laughs> um, we got a pretty cool episode here for you. Um, we're actually going to do kind of more of a stock talk one. Um, I don't know. You know, we don't know if it's going to be a weekly thing now. We don't, we don't really know. We're just kind of winging it, seeing what sticks. Um, we're going to try to talk, at least in this episode, about kind of how you get started, what worked for us, what didn't work. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of like a, like a trading stocks 101 almost kind of yeah. be- beginner's guide and like kind of, I mean, and kind of why you should even mm-hmm. invest. Um, but really the biggest thing is obviously, you, um, just use a, you want to use a percentage of your savings and, um, a- anything that we're really saying right now, honestly, is, um, it all depends on that too. And it's not professional opinions by any means or nothing like that. Um, so we're going to just say that right now for sure. Yeah, we're definitely, um, if if you guys take all this in and you invest and you lose a bunch, we're definitely not liable. We're not telling you what you should do. We're only telling you what's worked for us and what hasn't worked for us. So if you take anything, um, invest at your own risk. Yep. That's and, and that's the biggest thing. Do your own research too. Um, listen to everyone else's advice and stuff, and then you make your own um, kind of decisions and judgment based on that too, of course, because there's always risk in, in investing. So uh, just keeping that in mind. Um, when you have money though in your savings account, um, it just kind of sits there, you know. I mean, you could add to it every paycheck and stuff like that. Um, but with inflation and, um, you know, the cost of goods and stuff like that, even. Um, you know, it's, um, it's kind of going to have less value. Um, otherwise if you throw some of it into a stock, um, you know, even a big mutual fund or something like that too, even, um, you could, um, kind of, you, you would, um, gain, you know, gain money from doing that over time too. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) kind of a weird transition there, but that's okay. Um, (laughs) But no, yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing is, you know, again, investing at your own risk, um, there's pros and cons to doing it. You know, some people like the the steady stream of of interest gained in a savings account or by doing like a bond stock or like buying bonds or um, stuff like that, like more safe investments. Um, the biggest thing that I, I guess I that's worked for me is I like the more like risky bets. I like the ones where, hey, yeah, I might lose a little bit, but I have the potential to make exponential money. Um at least that's again for me and what I like doing. And I, Dylan, and I know we talked a little bit about this before. I fi- kind of feel like that's what you've been doing, right, with uh, your kind of por- I mean, portfolio and stuff. I mean, or yeah, yeah. So I didn't even know how to do anything till about like a year ago. <laughs> and you know, I'm just one of those people that downloaded the app Robinhood. You know, it's getting some bad. Yep, that's what I use right as now. Well. Yep. But uh, I was just throwing money in random stuff, seeing what worked, and I'm like, oh, that looks cool. Let's put a couple couple bucks in there and. To be honest, it didn't work out so well because I didn't do my my homework, and <laughs> yep, <laughs> of course, yeah, it happens. Five hundred to a grand and all, but then I'm like, you know what? After I saw this whole GameStop, AMC, whole fiasco, I'm like, okay, I gotta you know figure it out because obviously yep. there's pros and cons of you know like what Josh said, the high risk and the steady stream. So, but I actually got out of the whole stock things. I mainly just deal in crypto because mm, it can't okay. be influenced that easily by the big man big men on sure. Wall Street, or sales so. or uh, sales reports or earnings reports and stuff like that too right yeah yeah exactly yeah of course and because that's kind of the other thing too um with a lot of them um you kind of want to do your research on your stocks too 
and look at to see you know when they have their earnings reports um if they have a new kind of technology they're coming out with um the stock could go up too because the company would be more valuable at that yep. point too with that different mm-hmm. kind of asset um i know warren buffett who's probably the like most well-known guy in stocks the um, who's who yeah pretty much like the top dog <laughs> um said something <laughs> on lines of um don't buy a stock if you're gonna only hold it for 10 minutes if you don't want to hold it for 10 years if you have to so definitely do your research on stocks and you know kind of look around and see what's out there um definitely look at the different categories as well um robin hood like we've been talking about um kind of categorizes it with I don't know, we'll explain like hashtags almost, kind of like the top 100 movers of the day, so the ones that, you know, had the biggest change percentage, either up or down, or um, there's different states even, Minnesota places, or different um, technology companies or vehicle companies and uh, different stuff like that too. So definitely take a look around for sure. Yeah, and for at least getting started too, I don't, me personally, I don't really recommend just like jumping in it and kind of going, you know, balls to the wall. Um, kind of yep, deal. Yeah, don't, I, don't follow my example. Guys. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> um, I really recommend. There's a lot of good sites out there that use what's called paper money. Um, Think or Swim is a good one. That's um, God. What the con? I don't can't remember what company uses it, but that's the one I sure. used when I started. Yep. Um, I know you talked about you use. Yeah. Which it, one did you use? Honestly, I just looked up. Um, it's called Paper Trading too. Um, yeah. I just um, looked up on the App Store on my iPhone, and it's really called Sim uh, Stock Sim or something. Stock Simulator. Sim. And, yeah, they're uh, yeah. they're they're pretty cool because yeah, you can um, you can re- kind of do your research. It uses the actual market like every day. It goes real up time. and down real time. Yep. And you get usually it gives you anywhere from like five to ten thousand dollars to yep. invest. So you can really see okay, if I have a ten thousand dollar buying power. You can really see how this works, and it it's really recommended because then you can learn, okay, when is the optimal time to buy? When am yep. I going to see the most profit? When should I sell? And then they also have little things in there that can teach you about how things work. So you can, um, you can learn about the charts. You can learn about candlesticks, which is a huge, a huge part of trading. Um, you don't necessarily have to follow candlesticks. It's just everything... There's so many different tools out there, and there's a reason because there's so many different things that work for different people. Some people like the candlestick method. Some people just like looking at trends and seeing, okay, they were they were at six dollars six months ago. They're at twelve right now, yep. and they're at six dollars again, like a year before that, and then they're at twelve at a point. So in your mind, you're like, okay, well, they should probably go back down to six before they go back up to twelve, kind of a deal. Some people look at it that way. Um, I mean, there's just or so other ways people just look at the news. Like that's what yep. I did when I learned yep. it wasn't working for me. I didn't know that there were all the uh, prediction platform stuff. I knew from when I was testing. I'm like, hey, this ain't doing so good. And maybe this uh, lithium ion uh, <laughs> stock. You know, they they, they just open a new mine, so I may as well, well put some money in there. Like the news is everywhere. Social media, all that stuff can contribute as well. There you go. I thought we almost lost you for a second. Yeah. We came back at the end. We kind of cut in and out. But, Dylan uh, is, uh, he's actually, oh, my bad, my bad. it's Not okay. Yeah. He, Dylan's actually over the air right now. So if he's sounding a little different or a little laggy, that's, you know, we're trying to do yeah. it's, more it's, of a COVID friendly podcast here. Yeah, more of a, more of a weather friendly podcast too. Dude, weather it was, friendly it was snowing well. on the way here actually. Was it? It was kind of around bit. some corners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't heavy snow. You pounded up there, Dylan? No, not a lot of snow, just a lot of this cold-ass weather. It's been in below 5 degrees for like the past week and a half, and it's not supposed yeah. to warm up until yep. mid-next week. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what we got to. And that's been all over the news, too. <clears throat> um, speaking about all over the news, though, too, um, kind of this whole Reddit GameStop thing. I know we kind of talked about it once before. but Yeah, we, um, first podcast. Um, what's it called again? Volatility, too? Volatility. Um, something yep. else to keep in mind, too, of course. Um, I know um, some people before um, COVID even, um, we had a stock crash um, last March during yep. COVID. Correct. And the, just about every just about every stock except for Amazon at that point went down. Yep. <laughs> a lot. Tens of literally all of them, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Um, but um, and that just kinda happens too, and you gotta know that risk and be ready yep. for it as well and prepared. Um, but it's not that common. It's only happened, I think, twice in our history of existence. Well, no, it happens more often than it, people yeah. think. Okay. It, it happens on different scales. Yeah, sure, it's sure. so these I'm sure, yeah. crashes, for example, they happen probably couple times a month i'd say for sure 
like yesterday or a couple days ago, for example, yep. pretty much literally everything went down. Yep. There were a couple mm. things that kept going because they're, you know, they're trending up or whatever, but yep. um, most things fell. And those are the kind of days that people just kind of overlook or say it's a bad day or whatever. But um, I should say yesterday, it wasn't, nothing really fell. It just kind of plateaued. Like I didn't, you didn't really make anything that nothing really lost. It was just kind of a, it just fluctuated right behind, right on the zero line. Um, and again, these are all just things to watch. You know, if, if you're, if the stock continually goes down for say four or five days, that's a pretty good indicator that you should probably look into it a little bit more and see, okay, if it's at $3, it was at seven the other day yep. and $3, the 52 week low, yep. it's probably not going to go any lower than that unless the company is going bankrupt, obviously. Right. Yep. So then that'd be a good time again to invest. And these are, these are just small tips. Again, I, it's just, there's so many different ways that can work for you and yes. so many different options and avenues and types of stocks like there's tech stocks those are typically the more safe routes you yep. have the big name ones so like amazon tesla um different vehicle companies as well consumer yeah. stocks energy consumer, stocks are a big exactly. one as well on the rise. yeah and yep. then there's you know the more risky ones like um oil stocks in my opinion are somewhat risky just because you don't really know if everything's going ev or not yep so it could pay off it could not you don't really know at this point yep no, and that's for sure too. Um, and the other good thing um, about Robinhood too, even actually too, is um, they don't actually have any transaction fees, whether you put money into your account or that um, when you're trying to take money out either. Um, I know um, it's kind of coming more common now with a couple other sites too. Um, but at least for me, yeah, I've had good luck on Robinhood. Um, as long as you're not taking your, you know, um, your percentage of your savings, like we said earlier, and throwing it all in one stock. Because that's when you're going to lose a lot of money too. Yep. You want to throw a couple here, there. Um, Robin Hood as well is. Um, I are they the only place that does like the kind of um, you can buy no. a share of a stock? There's a couple other Every, sites everywhere too? does it. It's oh, just really? okay. the only um, place. The yeah, only, there's a few. Yeah, but it's just there's certain stocks that they do it on. You sure. can't like if it's a two dollar stock, you can't buy a percentage of that. But okay. if the, there's a reason why you can do it for Bitcoin, where you can buy like a two percent share of a. A share. Right, because it's forty-seven thousand. Because it's, nobody has now. forty-seven thousand yeah. dollars. Yep. You know, that's and that's mm -hmm. uh, that's the kind of scenario where it's like Apple. You can't you can't do that with Apple. Right. Because it's only a hundred something bucks. Something. I think it's hundred thirty-two. I think. I something. Know. Let me look at my portfolio. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Real quick. But uh, you know, speaking of Robinhood, it's been a lot of hate lately. Even though yep. personally, yep. I like Robinhood. It's super, super people friendly. Yes. Like you can yeah, they updated it. The crypto's back up on there. But the main reason why people are hating on it is because they're actually, I read on the news today or the other day, that they were selling people stocks for GameStop, AMC for them yep. without their consent. And that yep. was just a part of the terms and agrees they signed to. Yep. yep. But still, at the same time, makes you think like. Why are they selling this? Because, the, you know, the whole Citadel tied in owning Robin Hood, trying to make sure that these hedge fund guys don't go bankrupt on Wall Street because it just blows my mind, yeah. honestly. No, and it's crazy, too. Um, that whole kind of Reddit thing, too. Um, I um, actually watched another interview with the guy who started that page. And he... The Wall Street um, Bets? Yep, yep. The Reddit page, yep. yep. Um, or what is it? Uh, subreddit? I don't know yeah. how it works. I, it's it a, yeah, yeah, subreddit on for Wall Street Bets. Yeah. And um, yeah, he kind of um, didn't know it was kind of going to get to that extent when he started it because he started it a couple of years ago. He was just kind of making it as an open forum and he's just kind of like, it's crazy how it is, you know, it's transformed today. You know, I mean, um, and it it's just absolutely is. nutty, though, the amount of effort they put in to stop people from buying GameStop because they even went on the Discord page for Wall Street Bets and they shut it down, saying, saying it really? was like, you know, toxic people on there, blah, blah, blah. But really, they're just trying to shut the whole thing down so that they would drive the price down again. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't lose all that money. Well, they mm -hmm. already lost millions, if not yeah. billions. Oh, yeah. After that. Well, the, the, it is going super super far down like yeah, compared I think to like what it was i think it's like 50 bucks today is it 50 still oh okay I, yeah it's like that's 50. still not bad yeah. i know it started at like five dollars <laughs> yeah yeah it's five jumped all the way up to like what four or five hundred dollars yeah something like that they're trying yeah. to push it over a thousand but they didn't no nope. didn't yeah. quite make it 
Now, some, pe- some people took out. their profits. Some people got greedy, but, I mean, uh, good for them at the same time. I didn't get in on any of that, uh, luckily. Um, I had a couple of stocks that they did um, uh, stop me from buying more. And, of course, um, it stopped everyone on the app from buying more, so it tanked. So um, I still ended up um, I, I ended up uh, selling what made me even. I still kept 20 shares of it, and it's been going off like a skyrocket right now. I got another 8 bucks in profit today from it. But wow. it just kind of was one of those chance ones, and they saw it go up that much in percentage, too. And I only put 100 bucks in it. And when I sold it off, I only had a value of maybe 3 bucks in it. And, yeah, now it's at... 23 25 um you don't have to you know put that much in it to start like i said i only put 500 dollars into it when i started um other people you know have been working uh i didn't have a big boy job for a while because of coronavirus you know i um was retail and then um finally got uh, back in my groove again and uh, got a got a real job now so we're gonna be throwing some more in there and making some bigger profits and some bigger moves uh here in a little bit but i just wanted to start and get my foot in the door um we I did that paper trading for about a week yep. and um, just kind of tested some stuff out and um, learned if I threw ten thousand dollars in one stock and went down to eight thousand, that wasn't very good. Yeah, not <laughs> so, a good idea. Yeah, I made some silly mistakes there, and um, I mean, um, I we talked a little bit about this before too. We started um, just kind of our silly mistakes we've done. Yep. Um, I um, bought Bitcoin for I think I put maybe a hundred dollars in it, um, bought the partial share like we talked about a little bit ago too. And um, I kept it for about 10 minutes, and the stock dropped like $3,000. And I was like, oh, shit, dude. I'm, I'm already losing 7 bucks right now. Yep. I should just get out now before I lose 50 Like, this thing's just going to crash right now because I didn't know any better. Sold it, and then it just went up. And like we said today, about a month later, a month and a half from when I sold it, I yeah, bought it at... It was around twenty three, maybe twenty five thousand. Yeah, now it's at forty eight thousand. Forty eight. So, um, Absolutely. Don't crazy. sell too early, um, and you can always hold it. Um, if, if you're going down, hold it till it comes back up. Because, like we said, with the coronavirus thing too, um, people just held it from last March until about this March. Even I know some people, um, and they finally broke even on that stock, which whatever. But that's just kind of how the game works, and um, you just got to keep it if you need to. I mean, luck of the draw. Yeah. That's gambling too, over time. Yeah, pretty much. That is true. <laughs> well, and it's it's one of those things too, where even after you you do the paper money for a while and you, um, you know, you practice, you think you got it down, and you're like, okay, well, I haven't, you know, I haven't taken any losses. I think I know how it works. Um, you can still take losses, and that's it's it's more you just got to look at look at the market. You got to weigh your options. Um, for example, anybody who listened to our uh, sec podcast or first one, one of the I, two. I talked about how <laughs> I bought a thousand dollars of Bitcoin yep and I had a two percent stake I actually just the other day I actually had to sell that because I have I was waiting on a little bit more funds to go in there into the your the, Robinhood account. my my account yeah. yeah and one of the stocks that I've been following uh Zometica for example it's a really good stock at least um I think so. It has been um, the past two weeks, at least. Yeah, they they have some groundbreaking products coming out here soon within the next uh, couple months. So I did, I did throw uh, that's why they're bucks in there yeah too, that's but. why they're they're starting to shoot up a little bit. But yep. they actually um, went down on Tuesday, I believe. They with the whole market, they went down almost almost a dollar. So I actually sold out what I had so I could make a little bit of a profit before it completely sold down. Yep. When it hit the bottom it started going back up again. So I was like, okay, well I need to buy this back, but I didn't have any funds available. So I actually sold the Bitcoin stock for a loss, took a, took about a 15, $20 loss and bought it, bought back some Medica. But now after today, the stock went up for me, at least it went up. What I gain? 10% 10% today, 11% today. Right. And so, that, that so. made me almost 100 bucks. So in the end, it worked out okay. You still made 90 bucks total. You yeah. took the small loss to make a bigger game. Yes, because mm-hmm. it's all about, again, it's just, it's just another form of gambling. Yep. Um, can you get a little too far into stocks to where you're like, would treating it like gambling, you know? Yeah, you probably can. You definitely can. But it's just, you <laughs> just got to be... Avoid got to be really careful like yes the yes. story's been circulating actually i read today um this guy he invested so much money 
into uh, I don't know what it was, GameStop or some other company. Sure. And he ended up it went down and he was negative 700,000 something dollars <laughs> and he couldn't get a hold of tech support, anything. And it turns out it was the wrong number, but because he didn't know that and he didn't do all his whatever, he sold he ended it. Up committing suicide. Oh, wow. really? $700,000, huh? Yes. He put, I think it was $30,000 into something and then it just tanked and he couldn't do anything or something along the lines of that. And yeah. it's, it is exactly like gambling. Like, Either you know and you can, you know, stock manipulation. That yep. word's floating around too. Yeah. But never hurts to be too careful. Yeah, and and maybe it was one of the Robinhood ones too. Um, and that's the only time. Is that the only time a, an app or anywhere has done something like that? Like pretty close. The limit on a They've stock? done it a little bit more, but or no, like, Robinhood actually halted all trading for I think twenty different stocks. They just yep. put a complete yes. lockdown on it, yep. handcuffed it up, and they're like, no, you can only sell this, and maybe we'll sell it right. for you. Because that's yeah, and that's what I was saying too. Um, because the first little bit, they um, I think they sent something that night after. Um, closing hours, which um, for Minnesota it's uh, four thirty. No, three thirty. Yep, three thirty. Three thirty. Mm-hmm. Yep, because um, we're an hour behind. Um, and um, um, yeah, um, that the right after the after hours um, closed, Robinhood sent an email. I read it, and it was okay. You can't sell or buy any of these twenty stocks. And of course, yeah, I like I said, I had two, I had two of them on that list at that point. One of them I still have. Actually, I have both of them still. <laughs> um, and yeah, when um, it opened the next morning, it just kind of flatlined. Some more people bought it on different sites, I'm sure, because it went up a little bit. You know, um, Robinhood is obviously not the only site. You can do it through an actual, you know, brokerage, like you were saying too. But they're gonna charge you a fee because um, they have actual advisors and people that try to help you and whatever. Um, this is definitely the cheapest way to go for beginners. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, it just kind of stalled because no one on Robinhood could buy or sell it. And then the next day, um, when it opened in the morning at 7 a.m., um, so the, they sent the email at, yeah, 6 or 7 a.m., but the stock in Minnesota opens at 10.30. Um, they, um, stock market 10.30? Sorry, 8.30. Yeah, sorry. I was like, yep. whoa. Whoa. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> 8.30. Yep. Yeah, it opens at 8.30, but um, yeah, you could then sell your stock, but you couldn't buy anymore. So yeah, then that's, that's where everyone just sold it, and then I lost... You know, I went up 40 bucks and then I lost 15. So I was still up, but I could have sold it and made more of a profit. Yep. But the hardest thing is timing the market. You can never really do that. Well, and that's and that's what a lot of people don't know how to do too. There's a thing called stop uh, stop losses and yep. stop limit selling. Um, those are pretty good tools to have in your arsenal. So if, for example, I actually again I made a mistake the other day myself. Um, one of my stocks that I invest in went to a 52 week high and after hours it kept going up so I didn't think anything of it whereas when I woke up the next morning I I forgot to check the stocks right away in the morning and it actually went down I think like 20 percent or 30 percent or something like that and I lost a good chunk of those profits that I just made whereas if I would have put what's called a stop loss you set it at so if you're if your stock set say three dollars a share and you set your stop loss to 2.9, if that stock goes to 2.9, it automatically sells, sells all your shares. Yeah, yep. you don't have to do anything. It just does it for you. Um, and there's also one that's called stop limit selling. So that one is kind of similar, except you can choose an amount of shares to sell. So what a lot of people do is they do that same kind of strategy to where if it goes to 2.9, yep. but then they calculate, okay, well, I'm invested in this stock for um, $1,000 and... $2.9 a share, I need to have X amount of shares to make my money back. Yep. So I'm going to um, sell the limit that I need. So say 50 shares, whatever. Right. Yep. It's going to sell 50 of my 100 shares. So I break even. So you break even and the rest, it doesn't really freaking matter at that point. Yep. Yeah. Because um, you're going to go even at the absolute least if yep. it goes to zero. But obviously you're going to be up some too. Yep. And that's what I did with the two. Like I said, I had in Robin Hood too. Um, cause yeah, I just couldn't, I couldn't risk watching it tank again. Cause yeah, after the one day they, <laughs> they put all the limits on it, it just kind of went straight down and, uh, yeah. But like I said, it's been going up again. My one, uh, CTRM, it's a, it's a, some weird boating company. I bought it for 33 cents a share, about a hundred shares. And I sold, uh, about more than 75% of them to break even when, uh, the, the Robin Hood thing happened. Cause I was scared of the risk of it. So, um, yeah, you know, and that's the thing too. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit on it. I could have probably made um, a little bit more if I would have kept my shares in it. But, uh, 
you take your own risks too. Um, if you um, don't want to take that risk and you want to keep your por portfolio more even and would hate to risk that extra $10 or something, yep. then that is a good strategy for you too. So just kind of learning exactly. the different strategy and the different, yeah, limit losses and um, the different options of that too is a uh, really good too to look at and play with, with the paper trading. So Dylan, you said you, uh, you actually stopped trading after you lost all that. So yeah, I actually did the like exact opposite of you. You sold your Bitcoin, <laughs> put it in stocks. I sold all my stocks <laughs> and, put it in and, Bitcoin. Uh, and I sold my Bitcoin as well. Oh, and because I saw the tweet from the almighty Elon Musk. Ooh, Daddy, Elon, said, huh? Doge. Daddy Elon. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, fun fact, it's actually, let me pull it up here. Hold on for the exact percentage. Yeah, I dumped all that all that money for my stocks tied up into Dogecoin. Dogecoin, and huh? Yep. In the past three months, it's gone up two thousand four hundred percent. Absolutely wow. nutty. It was less than a cent before. Let's say it was I mean, at it's still obviously oh, pretty low. Yeah. It peaked at eight cents and now it's hovering around seven cents. But overall you, it made what fucking, do you have in on it? If that? you don't mind me asking. What what what'd you buy in at? What was the what was it at when you bought I, it? I bought in at four cents, I believe, and oh, so that's a pretty good total total profits here, according to this, is one fifty. But that's today, pretty good, though. For the past week, it's been pretty pretty bad. It's gone down six okay. percent, but yeah, that's kind of how Bitcoin was too, because Elon uh, did that thing on Twitter too. He posted about Bitcoin or well, did something to his body, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We talked about it in our last podcast. Oh yeah. No, bit. you're right. Yeah. Yep. But hey, man. It's just crazy how celebrities like himself and other people have such an influence on this kind of stuff. Because, like, before, as soon as he sent that tweet out, it just skyrocketed. And I'm like, I just see the money going up from here. And yep. it's just been going up, down, up, 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 and down. Well, and another thing. And I love it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Everybody does. When you see that big green arrow or the green instead of red when you open it up. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, baby. Another thing to watch, too. So, again, we talked about watching the news is a big one. You want to watch, like, upcoming launches. If, like, if uh, Sony is announced to n launch the next next level game or next level gaming console, console right. whatever it is, you got to watch that because more than likely, if it's seriously next level and it's like a, hey, Xbox got nothing on this thing right that's a good time to invest is before that happens because the second that it gets launched everybody who didn't know about it is going to say oh crap they have they can do that like if they get a serious like a real yeah, life like a real yep. life like vr thing where you can run or, like a little wheel or something where you can run in your house and yeah play shooters and you can actually be like running around oh, and kind of like laser tag or, yeah like a laser yeah, tag okay. thing but like they, in, they have those in our kids but anyways but a re you know what i'm talking about though. <laughs> yeah no i know what you mean like no. if something like that comes out you want to get on that before it gets announced so you can ride the waves yeah. if you get in on it when it after it gets announced it's that's plain risky bets right there. Yep. Um, another thing to watch too is because we're in the American stock market, um, there's things that you might not be able to catch if you don't branch out a little bit and watch a little more global news, more overseas stuff. Overseas China stuff, and... yes, because China isn't involved with the stock market. But what they do is that the companies that are affiliated with America and they want to branch out to America, they they are foreign based well they're sometimes. they're foreign based but they do a merger with a blank check company so what mm. a lot of things and it's the same thing. it's the same thing like what nicola did um they merged with a blank check company the blank check company opened at i think ten dollars when they merged they merged at twenty dollars nicola went up to ninety dollars at one point sure um i still have a few shares of them i think they're at like 24 Two or three or something like that. It's still like a three dollar per share gain. Nothing crazy. I'm just holding until end. Yep. But there's a new one coming out. Um, I believe it's Lucid Motors. Huh. Or something. Lucid Motors. I, I feel like I've heard the name actually, um, but I haven't. I seen believe it's. On it. I believe it's Lucid Motors or something like that. Um, they are the soon to be number one EV manufacturer in China, and they're actually merging with a blank check company like i'm talking about yeah. called churchill capital oh yeah um which i am actually an investor in there you um, go big shock um <laughs> but after hours today yeah so right now it's still a blank check they literally make no money um it literally right now what those are is that you're just banking on the fact that 
the company will merge and that the company will make profits for you. So people are getting in on it now while it's low yep. before it shoots up. I read so, something you want to get in on the rumor and yep. then hold the, when, Ride the it, waves. when it comes real. When yep. it comes true, hold it. So like, for example, today on the market, it went down 4.17%. After hours, sure. the second that the hours it hit closed, hours, yeah. it went up 13%. Do you, do either of you guys how after hours work? Because I tried to sell one time during after hours, but it doesn't work. Does it not work like that? Or it, it didn't work for me that one um, time I tried it. But it, I think it's case by case because sometimes it's worked for me and sometimes it hasn't. Like I tried to sell my AM, or AMC when it was going to shit. Well, I was I AMC tried to sell though, it after but... hours and it wouldn't let me. But for another <laughs> stock that wasn't, you know, in so much heat, it did work for me. Sure. And that was just on Robin. I don't know. Um, I can't. Re- I can't remember. After usually after hours, I try not to look at it. It's, I yeah. Don't really, I don't really care about after hours. Yeah. Um. Obviously, it affects it, but of course, I, I don't know. Um. Because b- the beginning hours too, the next morning could do the exact same. It can go up more, or it can or, do the opposite. Um, right, you never exactly. know. Yeah. 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 Counteract it. But. I think you. If I remember right, I think you can purchase during after. Well, no, because there's sometimes they go down, so you can sell them too. Like, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, know I don't, get, I don't follow yeah. too I've much had, that. I've had buy calls go through after hours so, okay yeah. maybe i just got unlucky too um i know uh, i did a limit Josh, order what but... was that uh sorry what was that uh company in china you said the lucid motors lucid motors lucid. yeah all right so apparently there is also upcoming news for in america rivian uh rivian. is tesla's yep. is uh, tesla's new rival what? and really? they're super yeah. up and coming i'm thinking about buying them because Tesla's they are been going backed down. by Amazon and Ford. Just like, looking, well, wow. yeah, because Ford is making the Rivian, whereas Nikola is the GM counterpart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So GM is going to make the Nikola um, Badger pickup, the EV, and then Ford is going to co-produce the Rivian, whatever the hell it's called. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, the only so, reason why I heard about it is because at work today, I work for FedEx. Yep. And yep. Uh, they, they put out a notice that we might be all going to electric vehicles yep. provided oh, yeah. by these guys. And oh, I'm yeah. like, that's wow, crazy. That's well, that's because nuts. Biden passed the other day. He passed a law saying that all federal workers have to have EV vehicles by the end of this year or next. I really? Believe. Yep. Absolutely crazy. That's nuts. That'd be awesome, though. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Except but that's in the nuts. winter. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Especially, especially, especially yeah. winter in Minnesota. I was going to say, yeah, especially up north, eh? <laughs> right? you, yeah. I mean, those, I mean, the electric cars are awesome. I'm a big believer in them. They just really got to, they really got to gear their stuff towards colder climates. Like, yeah, they're awesome in Texas, California, oh, LA. Yeah. No weather. Science, man. Yeah. Batteries die in the cold. I mean, no. yeah. it's just brutal, man. I mean, they just... They lose so much charge to these negative degree weathers where it's... I've had to plug in my car every night for the past two weeks to get to work in the morning. You have an electric or what? You have an electric car? No, 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 no. I have a regular <laughs> gas car. What do you mean? Uh, have to plug your car in. <laughs> yeah, what, do you plug, what are you plugging plug in? Car into? <laughs> I just, I got a uh, block heater that I have to plug it in oh. to warm everything in there. Uh, <laughs> and then I sometimes have to go out and... Put some hot rags over everything. Hot too. rags. Ooh, I've had my battery steamy. ice over. I don't know how water gets in there. Does but... it get moist? No, it doesn't get moist. Oh no, <laughs> you can hear when you whisper. Uh, when you whisper, yeah, remember, we're, we're, yeah, yeah. Mics. We're, having, we're having some issues. <laughs> oh, with that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Did you guys okay. viewers back home will see that? Yeah. Well, if they caught the last episode, they'll they'll get the inside joke. That's, yeah. That's, that might be a. That that's might be well. A new that's thing, kind of right? our thing. Yeah. We usually reference the previous episode all at right, least. Yeah. Like, well, all right, we've done it at least three times. Now, you, if you if you really haven't watched the second one, you got to go back. Like, yeah, okay. you're gonna miss just all pa- the just jokes. Just pause this one. Go back to the last one. Watch and the then whole thing. Pick it up when you come back. Right, hold on. Let, let, let me uh, let me hop off here. Oh, yeah. Right here. Uh, yeah. Well, we're gonna pause the we're gonna pause our podcast. We're gonna catch up and then we'll be. Well, the problem. <laughs> is too once you go back to the second one you might as well go back to the first one because oh, yeah. then you're gonna miss the second ones yeah you know inside jokes the, as the, well the pre-super bowl <laughs> to the super bowl podcast the pre yeah pre 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 podcast podcast yeah you're right, you're you're right. right. yeah absolutely absolutely dylan when was the last yeah. time you bought one of those fruit fruit containers at um 
at the grocery store. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, where they like got the fruit platters, fruit where platters? they got the kiwis and they got the strawberries <laughs> and the, the blueberries. Uh, no, oh, cherries. It's like a lunchable yeah. book yeah, for, for, for fruits, though. Right? I've oh, never had one with cherries. Ah, uh, uh, let me think. They're like here. obnoxiously expensive. I've never seen one with cherries. Either. It's like it's like eight dollars for the little one, and then it's oh, like God, no. it's like twelve for the decent size. I was gonna one. say like forty, but no. I used to get the fucking back in the day before it was great value. I'd get that kind. So great value. What? It had like it had like pineapple and it had like red machino cherries in it and it oh. was absolutely delicious. That but sounds it, pretty like, good. Would jack you up on sugar. Great. I like the I like the kiwi with pineapple ones. I think those are my favorite. Kiwis, I don't know. I like the the skin on the outside is kind of gross, but like once you get past that and you just scoop out yeah. the fruit, oh man, those oh, things yeah. are good. I remember no, getting those, those like school. kiwi flavored drinks. They are always the kiwi bomb. flavored I don't know drinks. Why. Really? really? I don't think I've ever had a See, kiwi. See, I'm all for drink. the mango flavored drinks. Yes, but mango true. pineapple. Yeah. Oh man, mango vape juice. I mean, mango, not everything, bro. Mm. Tell you what, <laughs> do you uh, are you a vape god? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, hold on. Uh, oh, over the mic the in guy, the bro. podcast. He is the vape. Oh, jeez. Uh, if anybody is under eighteen, somehow, we man. do not uh, consent without a parent supervision. Yep. No. No. Hey, uh, actually, twenty-one in Minnesota. My vape ski. Is it twenty-one right. in Minnesota? Well, it's nationally eighteen, so I don't really care. Minnesota can uh, oh, yeah. lick my butthole. Dude, that was so dumb. I turned eighteen and I went and got a vape, and then it turned to twenty-one while I was twenty. So I went into the vape shop and I'm oh. like, "Hey, I'm gonna use my <laughs> points." They're like, "Oh, you need to be twenty-one." Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, they told me so that too. Stupid. They told me that too. I couldn't buy stuff for three months because it happened in January. My birthday is in March, so I couldn't do anything till March 11th. But uh, luckily, it was December 20th or something. I went into the the smoke shop and he's like, "Hey, just so you know, you should probably stock up now." And I'm like, "Ah, you right." So I just got a month worth <laughs> months worth of stuff and uh, held out till March, bro. Yeah, <laughs> must have been crazy. A, though, must have been a tough ride. Army, yeah. Booze. It's not, not like a booze, sorry. You can listen to the army and kill people at 18, but you can't buy a cigarette. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. I think that was worse than the America. For sure. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of America, um, not actually, but kind of going back to the China thing. Have you what guys heard of the that Alibaba group? China, or no? that's, that's nothing to Alibaba. do with America. The China virus, bro. China virus. This is America. China we speak American. Yeah. Okay, Trump. <laughs> uh, speaking of corona uh you know i was feeling a little festive today uh tis the season for a corona uh not sponsored yet either but anyways um if you'd like to be <laughs> sponsored on our podcast please leave a yeah. comment in the section below and we will be sure to get your product in the in the description um right off the bat have you ever wanted a cool podcast to stream out and listen to on your way to work listen to bet records B E T T Records. They email cool. us at Bet Records with two T's at gmail.com. Now, if you're an actual company, that could have been you. Think about that. That could have been okay, you. Okay, Joe Rogan ads. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, you're saying to, something about Alibaba, right? Yeah, I was gonna say going back to stocks a little bit. That's wait, that's that's this podcast, right? Oh, I think. Oh yeah. Oh wait. wait. No, we did that one already. Oh, oh no! This is the same one. Oh, same one. Okay, okay. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> we got a little bit off track there for a little bit. Um, but Alibaba, have you heard of it or not? Because it's yes. like, yeah, is it like yes. the Amazon or of China? Amazon of China, correct? Yeah, because they're um, yep. what e-commerce. Yep, it is shipping stuff, Dylan. Yeah, you can basically buy Alibaba products and put it on your website for more for more money, and that's how those scammers on Instagram and shit make money. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, so so what you're saying is I invested invested in a bunch of scammers. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> I don't know, bro. It, it keeps going up. So uh, ride the ride the scammer wave, I guess. Hey, I hey, ride the what, wave. I know. Right, few <laughs> dog toys for twenty cents a piece. Go for it, man. <laughs> no, I didn't actually read that. Um, I don't dog know how toys, they're sponsored huh? or how it works, but. Um, no, I didn't read about dog toys either. But uh, no. <laughs> you bought some uh, cheap dog toys, Dylan? Do you even have a dog? Uh, is possibly a dog, soon, bro. actually. Really? What, really? You, what kind of dog are you getting? Uh, I want to get a golden doodle. Golden doodle, those are pretty cool. 
I mean, obviously yeah, not as my, cool as a golden retriever, but, you know, I mean. He's the most brain-dead animal on the planet, oh. but apparently that's just him. Other that golden sounds, doodles are really small. That sounds so. like an awesome dog. Yeah, I'd love to get a, a brain-dead dog. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I would just I love an animal that runs in the walls and, and doors. Yeah, that'd be sweet. It's kind of what you do, Dylan, isn't it? Hey now. Hey, what are you trying? Hey. You're an all-star. <laughs> Get your game on. Go, Go play. play. <laughs> I think we need to sing a song every episode. Last last oh, episode it was uh oh, last oh. episode it was oh, don't say it. Don't say it. You got to go back and find it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Good luck. If it's not in there, go to the first one. <laughs> and just re- listen to them all. Yeah. <laughs> What else we got here? What else we got here, boys? We got a couple extra mm-hmm. things. Um, as far as stocks go, um, there's some good ones to get in on. Um, this week and next week, I'd say, are pretty good weeks to kind of look into it. Try the paper money thing. Yep. Um, Definitely this week. A lot of stuff has gone down um, yes. in the past couple of days, at least for yes. me. I'm really scared about tomorrow, to be honest. I yes. think I'm going to take another loss. I went up like no, 30 bucks. Tomorrow's going to be a winner. I think so? Yep, Friday. Usually a winner. I'd say probably 10 out of 12 Fridays or for you or, or, no, wait, or what do you mean? Never mind. I was thinking months. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'd say three out of four Fridays of every month are gainers. Really? Typically going into the end of the week, so, they usually round out and, typically. And what I've noticed, just There's, there are patterns. Yes. And I think so too. And and that's honestly though, that the thing that sucks is that's not always true either. Um, I sit in front of two monitors at uh, work all day. So I watch, you know, I've watched multiple stocks go up and then down and up and down and whatever. Just about every stock reaches its bottom for the day at about 10.30 to about 11.30 in the morning. Correct. Um, Just from what I've seen, and again, it's hard to time the market, bro. Um, I've also seen stocks that I've also seen stocks that the first three hours they go down, and after 11 a.m. Yep. they go up and they don't stop. They well, go up 500. percent And one of the, the things day. too you want to watch crazy. is the first hour or two of the market are the most volatile hours of the market. Yep. So you're either going to get high gains and then it's going to level out, or you're going to get high losses and it'll level out. It's usually not. It's it doesn't tank unless everything's tanking well, and i guess we should almost talk about why a stock would tank basically sometimes in the mornings like we were talking about the after hours and stuff how we were saying after hours yep. usually for the most part sometimes mostly <laughs> go up yep um people they see do it go goes down. up they do definitely go down like i said one of mine did today weird it was weird i don't know yep. it went down a lot anyways disney went up like three bucks for me after hours so that was dope um disney's been going off bro not even gonna lie um anyways um, sometimes though, um, what happens usually in the mornings is people see the, um, after hours, the stock goes up 30 cents. The stock might go up another 10 cents in, um, from eight 30 to 9 AM when they open the market opens and everyone just sells it. They sell They sell that stock sell and then they go to the next one. Yep. yep. So that's why it always dips there well, every that's, single time. Uh, that's the thing about day trading too, which again, no isn't, bastards. yeah, yep. well, day trading yep. is a thing. I think you're maxed at. I think three. I think if you do three a week, they cancel your on Robinhood. On Robinhood, if you do three day yep. trades a week, it's any platform. It's a it's a federal law, actually. Really? Oh, I actually if you, didn't know that. If I you, thought it was just a Robinhood. If you thing. buy the stock right away at eight a.m. and then it goes up ten dollars a share, and you sell it that same day, you can do two of them. The third one, they will ca- shut off your account, and they, you will get audited by, um, I believe, the IRS. It is a tax thing, yes, because really? I actually had to go yep. on my taxes, go into my long-term gains, and file those on my taxes because there's yep. long-term and then there's short-term yeah, every, gains. Every yep. year, basically under a year or over a year. Yep. Every year you have to take whatever you do, whatever platform you do, you will get a W two or whatever it is. They give you a statement. A yep. statement, and you do have to file that on your taxes as gains or losses. Which, again, that's how a lot of companies like play the system and like how these hedge fund guys play the system because they own companies they put all the company's money into stocks make the money but then they put on their balance sheet for the company that they were a loser 
Yep. When in actuality, they just threw it all at stocks, and that's the only reason they lost all that money. Yep. And it's nuts, too, because if you say that you lost money on stocks, they you actually get like money back from that. Like, hey, yep. I took a loss. Okay, we're going to give you some of that back. Yep, because you know they, they want you to invest at the end of the day. Is it a, is it a 15% yeah. um, on your winnings or on your gains? Uh, your so profit, if believe, it's right? uh, long-term gains, profit. you have, still have to pay 15% on your gains. If it's short-term, it's 30%, I believe. Really? Damn, I'm not making Which is, that much. Which uh, big number. <laughs> no. Wow. Thirty percent. Say no. Say you got you know like thirty grand. That's that's you know a good chunk of that. That's a good chunk. But I mean, it's still at the end of the day, it's, it's better than profit. nothing. Yeah. yeah. And that's the other thing I mean, too. Yeah. From the, the average, the dude sitting next to me at work. If I have ten dollars in the stock mo- stock market and he has zero, I still have a chance of making more money that day than he does, even yep. if we get paid the same. You know. Mm-hmm. Yep. I could still lose a dollar, but the next day I might still yeah. gain five. I mean, start know? start small. You don't have to. You don't have to go of in course, like. Of course. Like when I started, I had uh, I think a uh, couple couple hundred bucks. I think for about a year, I I used a couple hundred bucks, bought Tesla, bought them for twenty bucks a share, sold them at eighty. Now then they went up to two grand, and I. Yep. <laughs> Again, <laughs> that's like, how you. Oh, yeah. That's how you miss out. <laughs> yep. I mean, there's things. I got scared. Elon Musk said some stupid shit. I got scared. Yep. And that's how it goes around, you know, and at, at first you just want to, you want to play small. You want to learn what works, learn what doesn't work. You don't want to go too balls to the wall. Like yep. right now I'm at balls to the wall point. I got, I got probably 50, 50 on savings to, um, what I have in the stock market. So once you figure it out and once you know that, Hey, here's what I need to do. Here's what I need to watch. I need to set stop losses. You, you really have to hound it almost like it's a second job. Or else you're really gonna you're gonna lose a lot if you don't hound it every single day. If you if right at eight you don't open your open your phone and look at the market, you're gonna lose money. If you don't open your phone at ten, you're gonna lose money. If you don't open your phone right at close, you're gonna lose money. You just gotta you gotta hound it, and that's and that's something people you gotta learn before you get super into it. No, that's, that's exactly that. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Dylan. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, for me, I treat it almost the same as my, you know, my daytime job. I check it all the time during the day, all the fucking time. Like, you know, Dogecoin goes down a little bit. I put a little bit more in, goes up. I'm like, perfect. I treat it just like my nine to five. And that's how your streams of income just slowly get gradually bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, no, for sure. And and that's the thing that kind of sucks too. I mean, obviously, just kind of like gambling, the more that you want to risk is more than, you know, you're probably going to get more of a reward that way. But like we said from the beginning, um, uh, you know, take your own, you know, savings, do an own percentage of that, um, put in what you're willing to risk. If it, you know, every stock was to go to zero, put that a little bit in. Um, do some of that stuff for sure. Um, and, and again, and again too, though, we, we aren't, I just want to put it out there. I want to preface where if you guys do this, if you guys take any of our advice, um, it's this, we aren't professionals. We're just, you know, we're just guys who like trying to make money and try to yep. try to play the, play live the, the game. American dream, live the American dream. So if you take anything, you invest it, you lose your money. We're not liable um whatever you do it's it's on you but i i hope it i hope this has helped some people and i hope it's i hope you guys at least listen to it and at least at least try the paper money thing out i highly recommend and at least learn from our mistakes um don't get if you learned anything from this whole thing um like i said my thing about losing um 20 40 bucks um don't be emotionally invested into the stock market like we said too if you're gonna buy something and hold it for 10 minutes Make sure you want, will hold it for 10 years if you have to, um, for sure. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's about all we got. Um, make sure you guys just kind of keep up with us, and uh, we'll keep doing our thing. Do I like how she move it. I like how she move it. I got that new whip. Go get a dude trip. I like how she move it. I like how she move it.